All right, guys. Um, do you guys have any questions? Yes, do you guys have any questions about, <clears throat> about everything we have covered up to log 15, uh, 14, sorry, log 14. No questions? Okay, uh, so if you no questions for now, we will continue. Okay, we're gonna enter a, another um, area of our study, the other area of our study. So before we, um, before we study these topics, I would like to um, review some of the topics as you, can, uh, as you can see on the screen. And of course, by, by this time, we have studied exponential and logarithm for quite some times. In basic one, we have covered these uh, three pairs of functions that are inverse to each other. And now we, have, we are studying you know, exponential function, logarithm function, provided, of course, uh, in these cases, then zero is less than b and b is not equals to one. Okay, so with that, with that speci specifics. So the properties we're using, the property we're using about exponential, right? The exponential property, we have reviewed them, right? Reflected on basic 21, basic 21, okay? So uh, just refer to basics 21. Right. Those those are the properties such as b raised to the power of m multiply b to the b raised to the power of n equals to b raised to the power of m plus n, etc. Right. Remember those properties. Right. Uh, b raised to the power of m divided by b raised to the power of n provided the denominator is not zero equals to b raised to the power of um, m minus n. And the other properties such as b raised to the power of m, um, parentheses raised to the power of n is equals to b raised to the power of m times n. These properties is what I refer to. Okay, about these exponentials, exponentials, okay? Uh, I'm sorry, exponentials. Okay, exponentials is, um, you know, something we learned in, in the beginning algebra class. If you need more exercise, please feel free to go those sections. And the other things such as B raised to the power zero uh, equals to one provided that b is not zero. Right? So and uh, and the other property the other property actually is a more or less is, is a definition is b raised to the power of a negative n is equals to one over b to the power of n. Okay. Um, Font just a little bit larger, 175%. Okay. The reason I, I, I want to refer to these properties of logarithm and, um, and at the same time we review basic one, right? Because in the process we derive, so I'm going to make a comparison table here. I'm going to make a comparison table here for, uh, you know, for our reference, right? For our reference. So for this property, okay, and that property, and the b raised to the power of m times n, b raised to the power of, um, let's uh, insert some more rows, okay, b raised to the power of zero, provided b is not zero, and b raised to the power of negative n. And this is gonna be 
I'm going to put a copy and paste here. Okay. Um, these properties, these properties, okay, which I put them in the column here, there's no specific requirement about B. Okay, as long as B doesn't make the denominator equal to zero, right? So in this case, B cannot be zero. For example, B cannot be zero. And of course, in this case, B cannot be zero as needed, as needed. Otherwise, these Bs, okay, there's no restriction. However, when um, B cannot be zero when necessary, when in denominator. Okay, so these are the these are the properties we are familiar with. But when these properties is transformed, transformed to B cannot be equal to one and B must be greater than zero. Well, these properties are still true, of course, right? So this is the, these are the requirement for B in the general sense where which you learn in algebra class. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm gonna put that in the um, in the row above. Okay, in algebra class, these are the general cases. Okay, general. Okay, specific exponential function. Okay, in the case of exponential function. In the case of exponential function. So what we, what, what we are working with is that because for exponential function, we require um, exponential functions such as, okay, let me give you some examples of inserting a row here. And I'm gonna talk, I'm, what I'm talking about is two to the power X, right? E to the power X, right? And uh, even half to the power of X, Okay, situations like that. And uh, 10 to the power X and so on and so forth. Okay, so these spaces are larger than zero, not equals to one. So when we talk about the logarithm function, logarithm function, okay, so let me, Logarithm functions right here, okay, functions. And we refer to, right, such as uh, log base two x, okay, or in general, the general case, b raised to the power of x, right? And this will be, uh, log base b to the power of x. Uh, I'm sorry, log base b x, okay, not power, etc. cetera. Th these b must be satisfying um, that condition. Okay, so these b's must satisfy that condition. And for logarithm, they must satisfy these conditions. So with our stage set, with our stage set, a comparative study, when you do the ln x, right, uh, you know, common log x and so on and so forth, all of these are special cases of that. And all of these are special cases of b to the power x. So the general form, so when we have a property like this, okay, when we have a property like this, which is, uh, I think this will be redundant, right? Uh, so it, this already is satisfied because this is already satisfied, okay? And the, for, for these kind of Bs, for these kind of Bs, all right? B larger than zero, not equals to one, okay? Then the respective property that, that corresponds to this one, corresponds to the product for all of these properties, right? 
So we're gonna have um, log base B, capital X, okay? Multiply Y is equals to log base B, X plus log base B of Y, okay? And usually we put a parentheses here. Okay, so these two are corresponding to each other. And we proved it. We, remember, we proved that property. We proved that property. And the next one is log base B, okay, capital X divided by capital Y. That is equal to log base B. My a uh, log base B of X minus. Okay. And this other property and it is corresponding to which we use it in the proof, right? And capital A to the power of heart. Okay, I used a heart there to the power of uh, heart. Okay, is equal to the heart multiply log base B of A. Okay, I hope that's uh, that's super clear for you. And the log base B, and these are special cases, right? And if this of one is always equals to zero, and the other property would be the log base B. You wouldn't need to, to specifically memorize these properties, um, you know. So suppose you have, um, suppose I put a, um, not heart again, right? Put a star, right? And that will be equals to the star, okay? So these are the properties we have gone over and they are all in the general, general, uh, general sense. Okay, general sense. And these are the properties that we used. Okay, you see traces of them in basic one, in basic one, and which is to determine the domain and range, which is determine the domain and range. Okay, because we understand the definition. So from the definition, definition is really, really is the king. Okay, this definition right here. Okay, this definition. Okay, dictates the domain range, domain and range for all of these functions. Okay, so let's, let's review how much you guys re, uh, understand, right? So what's the domain for b to the power x? Any questions so far? Any questions? Any questions about this table? Right, that's, that's, what, that's what we covered essentially in the last two weeks. Well, last week, sorry. We just, this is week number 10, right? Uh, this is week number 10. So in the last week when we return, these are the things we covered. We did the proof and we did all of that. If you have any issues, you should uh, revisit or watch those videos. And if after you watch the videos, you have considered, you have still have questions, please don't hesitate to uh, reach out to me. Okay. So what is the domain for B to the power X? All real numbers. All real numbers. Excellent. And what is the range? Greater than zero. What is greater than zero? B to the power of X is greater than zero for all real numbers. Perfect. Perfect. Right? You see, it's a natural because you know B is larger than zero. B is larger than zero. Therefore, B raised to any power is going to be greater than zero. Then you should be at this point reflected on the pictures we did. Remember the, the graph we did in basic one. Okay. So these are the connections you made. Okay. So now, what is log base bx? What is the domain? X is greater than zero. X is larger than zero. Range? All real numbers. 
or real numbers. That's it, right? So they are, this relationship is, the domain and range is entirely determined by this relationship. You see how, how they are seamlessly locked, okay? How they are seamlessly locked. Now, let's look at these two, these pair. Well, these are the special cases, of course. Repeat, repeat, repeat. Same thing, right? You see how naturally it comes. You don't need to memorize. You don't need to memorize. You need to understand, though. You need to thoroughly understand these relationship, these relationship. What is general? What is special? Right? So these are the general and these are the special. These are the special. Okay? So maybe I can reduce the number of uh, rows uh, by doing this. Right? Sometimes the table gets to be so big that... Um, so I do these, I put these in the comparative studies uh, con uh, context. So you, you and the, the goal is that you, you're not going to make those other mistakes we have pointed out along the way. Okay. And from these properties, from these properties, right? From these properties, what else have we learned? We learn how to evaluate a logarithm, right? Logarithm values we have done from log one through log 14. Among them, we, uh, we sometimes expand the logarithm in product or quotient to multiple logarithm. And sometimes we combine multiple logarithm using the product rule, quotient rule, power rule, to combine them into one single logarithm. So that's what we have done. That's what we have done. Okay, so now you see that these properties and the, and the functions are related. They are related. Okay, these properties, if, if we want to condense, if we want to put them in condensed form, right? So in the condensed form, um, I would say, Hey, let's keep it. Let's keep it short, right? Let's keep it short, and let's keep it short. And then, uh, regarding the, the 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 functions, you really just need to know these two cases: domain and range. Okay, because all the others are special cases. All the others are special cases, right? All the others are special cases. And you just have to know these two cases and you, you, can, you can get the other cases. So now, without further ado, okay, without further ado, we are going to start working on EXP1A. EXP1A, okay, EXP1A. EXP1A, okay. If all of these are statements, EXP1A, we're gonna study the if statements. Okay, EXP1A is about if statement. How do I know? It's as I said, solve for X. Solve for X. I'm gonna use the first example to make some, to discuss all the different ways you can solve it. All the different ways, the first example is a very simple example, okay? So we wanna use this example to explain all the ways you could use, you could do to solve this equation, okay? So this is basically saying, first of all, meaning, it's an if statement, okay? Basically saying, well, if this function, if this function, okay? The output, and then this, this function of course is three to the power X. Remember we talk about this, this, this course, the major theme is function. The theme is function, right? So we always come back to the functions perspective you can see that a function 
concept is omnipresent, right? It's omnipresent. And what is a function? We have learned that definition. Do you guys know, still know what the definition of function? Please tell me again, anybody. You can type, you can speak up. Just tell me, do we still remember the function? That essential concept. Come on guys. Yeah. Right. So as you are grabbing this definition, okay, so the if statement is saying if the function's output is nine, right? You see, this is the output. This represent, and this also tell you the rule of the function. And if the rule of the function produces an output equals to nine and find all possible values, values for X. If statement. Okay, so our, in our entire semester, we've been studying either the statement or the if statement. Have we studied another kind of structure of sentences? Absolutely not. No, no more, right? All right, so this is the meaning. So did you guys find out the definition of function? Yeah? A function is a rule, right? This is a rule. So with that meaning understood, reflect on all the things we have done, whether we were doing trig, we were doing a quadratic, has this, has these essential, has the sentence of the structure changed? You either were looking for domain uh, input or looking for output, right? Very good, thank you, Andy. A function is a rule that assigns to each element X in the set of A exactly one element called F of X in the set of B. Perfect, very good. So now when you, you look at the definition, you think about all the functions we have been working and you know, study, is it this definition becomes more uh, meaningful? Doesn't this definition becomes fuller? When you look at this definition, you're reflecting on all these functions we have learned. What are all these functions we have learned? In basic one, basic at the table, basic one, right? Linear, quadratic, square root, cubic root, power, x squared, right? exponential, logarithm, uh, trig functions, right? And they all fit in, this, fit in this definition. They all fit in this definition. Very good. Okay, so I'm gonna copy this, uh, just, just to think about this definition again. It's such a beautiful, beautiful definition for each element Right, in the set of A, exactly one element called f of x in the set of B. Right, it's a definition of function. How powerful is that definition? Tell me, how powerful is that definition? Do you feel the power of that function, of that definition? Do you feel it? One sentence. That's the beauty of mathematics. Okay. One good definition. One good definition. Powerful, very powerful. With that understood, Okay, with that understood, I'm gonna talk about the different aspect of solving this equation, which will apply to all of these other functions. Okay, the first method, method number one, very straightforward. Three to the power X, right? 
and nine is three squared. And there you go. X must be two. Done. Method number two. Method number two. Method number two. Okay. Method number two, I want to show you the graphical aspect of it. Okay. Because we mentioned this function three to the power X, right? And we know the output. The output is a given. Right? Looking for input. Right, so from that perspective, let's see what is this graph. We should be pretty familiar with this graph and we've done all of those graphs, right? I'm just putting, uh, I'm just going to get, uh, you know, just a part of this graph. Okay, so this is the graph. Okay. So this is a graph of the function. This is a graph function. Since we know the input, we, we, know, we don't know the input, we know the output, don't we? What is the output? It said output is a given. What is out? What does it mean? Output is a given. The output of nine is a given, right? Output nine is a given. So what does that mean? Well, output is a given. We are basically given a horizontal line. We're given a horizontal line. Remember the, the vertical cut, horizontal cut we did in quadratic? Do you guys remember that? When the output is given, we are basically told y equals to nine is given, okay? So that is the vertical, uh, the, the horizontal line y equals to nine is given. So this question, Okay, this question in nature, in nature, the nature of this question is to find the input at the crossing, at the crossing of y equals to nine and f of x equals three x. Could you please write that down? I also want you to reflect on quadratic, quadratic, the quadratic examples we did. Remember the vertical cut, horizontal cut? We did, and this is the horizontal cut. How similar are they? Yeah, how similar are they? They're very similar, just the rules are different, right? In the quadratic case, you have a parabola. In the exponential case, you have an exponential curve. The rules of the functions are different, but the way we handle them, if it's, fine, if it's looking for, if it's given input, uh, looking for output, we do the vertical cut. If given output, looking for input, you, we do the horizontal cut. It's that simple. Do you follow me? Okay, so what is the crossing? We're looking for the crossing, yeah? We're looking for the input at the crossing, right? So what you see when you have that graph in your head, you, you know the vertical cut, horizontal cut, 
everything can be、uh, can be visualized. Everything you guys learn in mathematics can be visualized. Okay, number one, from this picture, can can you tell how many crossings are there? How many crossings are there? One. One. That's right. Remember, we we also have talked about that these exponential functions are increasing functions, right? So unlike quadratic, quadratic has turns, right? It's not a it's not an increasing function. Exponential function is one to one function as well, right? Remember those concepts we talk about. One to one function means what? If you have one output, you only have one input. You're not going to have two inputs. Is is a is a quadratic function one to one? No, quadratic function is not one to one. So that's why sometimes for one output you may have multiple input. You may have two input corresponds to it, right? You see, that's the my that's the difference. That's where the difference is. But from the picture, you can tell how many crossing, and there's only one. So you you should expect only one solution. We should only expect one solution. So of course we will identify the input, right? The input x. Must be two, and that crossing, that crossing is two comma nine, two comma nine. Okay, so this is the point of the intersection. So what are we looking for? We're looking for the input for that crossing because we know the output already. Okay, so let's mark that point. Let's mark that point. I want everybody to draw this picture. I want you, I want you guys to reflect on this meaning. Okay. Please draw that picture. Reflect on the meaning. Two comma nine. Okay. The input, the output is given. Okay. The input. Is to be found, and we found it. Okay, so this is the second method I'm I'm talking about. This is the second method I'm talking about. Okay, so with that understood, with that understood, did you write it down? Okay, so let's talk about another method. Okay, let's talk about another method. Another method. This method is is uh is very limited only to the、uh, to certain types of function. Only useful to a certain type of function. Okay, for example, in this case, when we're solving this equation, when we're solving this equation, one of the things we can do is that we can take a logarithm on both sides. Okay, we can take a logarithm on both sides. And we can take logarithm on both sides, but there are important conditions we must understand. There are important conditions we must understand. Okay, and we can talk. We can take a logarithm of any base on both sides, but we also need to understand logarithm any base. We have a domain issue. We have a domain issue, don't we? Right? 
this omega must be greater than zero. Remember, we just reviewed that, right? The, whatever you take a logarithm, you must guarantee the number you take a logarithm be positive. And now because three is positive number, so three to any number, to three to the any power is gonna be positive, nine is positive. So in this case, okay, we know that three to the power X is a positive for any real number and nine is positive. That's the condition we can, we must satisfy when we take a logarithm on both sides. So when we take a logarithm on both sides, we must be aware of a domain. And in this case, yes, the domain requirements are satisfied. The domain requirements are satisfied. So we can take a logarithm on both sides. Then you say, well, well, if I'm taking logarithm on both sides, could I take with any base? The answer is yes. We do mean we can take any base. And because we can take any base and you can choose your base, do you hear me? Because we can take any base, you can choose your base. Then you say, well, can I choose any base? Yes. So suppose I choose base three. Okay, if I choose base three, okay, so let me still bring back the any base. Okay, as long as that base is uh, greater than zero, not equals to one. Okay, the any base of your choice must be in that case. Then you say, hey, I'm gonna choose base three. I'm not gonna mess with any base. I just, I just need one base, no problem. And then you will be able to solve that equation because using power rule, that's equals to X and log base three of nine, that's equals to three. So you get the solution. Okay, so if you show work, the work can be shown in, a simple three steps, okay? You have, you take logarithm on both sides from here, right? Three steps, you're done. If you, if you are to show work like this, you just have to show these three steps that so you're done. Okay, so this is the third method. Okay, this is the third method. Now, I just, I just talk about that you can choose any base. I literally mean any base, okay? So could I choose base natural log? Of course, of course, could I choose base E? Hold on. Uh, I need to I need to make some corrections, okay? Base E. Of course. Okay? I can certainly take LN on both sides. Okay? I don't need that anymore. And then I will get X times LN3 equals to LN9. 9 is 3 squared. Right? Ln three squared equals to two times Ln three. So divide both sides. If I divide both sides, okay. In this situation, we must treat Ln three as a single number. Ln three is a single number, okay? They cannot be separated. So Ln three, is it, it's a number, it's one number. This is one number, okay? You cannot separate it with LN and three. There's this, these two must be together, okay? So if I divide both sides by LN three, 
And there we go. We get x equals to two as well. In fact, you, you can choose any base and you will get the same answer. No problem. So this is the second method. This is the third method. This is the third method. And I would like to talk about the last method. The last method is actually a most important method, okay? Method number four. By definition. Very important, even I talk about it last, but it's, a, it's actually the most important, it's the most important. So now, by definition, what do I mean by definition? So here's the definition. So here's the definition. You guys see that, right? So we have the exponential form. Omega is known. Base is known, and we're looking for a triangle. So what is a triangle? According to this relationship, right? According to this relationship, right? X is equal to what? What does it equal to? Log base three of nine. Using definition, using definition, okay? So in the end, we're gonna get X equals to what? So let me, let me just show the work here, okay? So from here, by definition, you would just write X equals to, and that equals to two, you're done. That's how you use it by definition. Do you follow me? You just use, use the definition. Okay, so let me copy and paste the definition and put it right next to it. So the definition I meant. Right here. Right here, definition. So now I have covered all these four major methods. Of course, you can derive more methods. For example, at, in the third method, you can use, you can use um, any base. You can use base two, base E, base 10, base, any base of your choice. But I will call them just one method because they're essentially just one method, right? You choose different base. So these are the, the four major methods. Most of the, um, a lot of the textbook, they call it, they usually talk about three methods. Okay, three methods. In, in our case, it will be one, number one, number three, and number four. Method number two is, is, uh, is less addressed by most textbook. But I want to put it here because I want to, I want to make that a connection with function. I want to make that connection with function. So with that said and done, I want you guys to try all four methods, all four methods. I want you to reflect on these four methods. So please try all four methods on number three. Okay, so your turn. Okay, so please try did you guys take the notes? Okay, so try all four methods. All four methods on question number three. You guys have question number three in front of you, do you? Two to the power X equals to eight. Reflect on its meanings. Okay, I'm gonna get a cup of tea, I'll be right back. Okay, so keep going. Okay, number three, you use all four methods. Okay, the, key, the important part is not to get the answer. 
the important part is reflect on the meanings of these four methods. Okay, you can do you can do the methods any any order you want, any order you want. Okay, just hold on, I'll, I'll be right back. All right, so I'm back.
All right. You can use the four methods in any order you want. Okay, it really doesn't matter which order. Okay. Uh, you done? Okay. Good. Anybody would like to show your work? Well, yes. Very good. Thank you, Bailey. I think we got, two. did we get two? Okay, uh, share, right? So, so let's look at the baby's submission. So he used the first method, second method graph, third method take logarithm base two, and, and the last one definition. I think he did a perfect job. He did a perfect job for all four methods. Do you agree? Does everybody agree? Very good, excellent. Okay, so let's go back. Very good job, very good job, right? So I'm, I'm putting together the summary of the OER method of the first one, okay? I want you guys to do the same with number three, okay? Which is a summarize, which is summarize. You know, to tell you the truth and I, about summarize what we learn. I learned this when I was um, in high school. When I was in high school, I had this teacher and he was saying, um, you know, for what you learn, you need to summarize. And to me at the time of summarizing, doing summarizing, I feel it's kind of overwhelming, right? It's, it is overwhelming. And, and he was proposing that you should summarize chapter by chapter. At the time, I feel it was so overwhelming. It was so overwhelming. But I remember what he, he said, and so I keep trying doing, I keep trying it. So that's why you can see when I'm lecturing, I often put some kind of summaries for you because I have been trying to do this for years and years. And, summarizing, reflecting, and classifying. And these methods, if you apply them over time, you will, see, you will find the material you learned is not, not that much anymore. You will find a book of two inches thick become maybe just a quarter inch. Okay, so that's what I have benefited from that uh, uh, suggestion, but of course that suggestion takes many years to practice. And for those of you who are, uh, you know, whatever major you do, actually, I feel I find this method is very very useful. Summarizing, okay, or summarizing into you know certain, in certain way, okay, 
but you, you must learn to summarize. You must learn to summarize. Okay, so I'm summarizing for these methods. Okay, so I'm putting these um, uh, right here, right? And x equals to two, right? So I can put this over here, x equals to two. And the third method, And uh, we um, we take these we take a logarithm and we also get x equals to two. Be sure to check domain. Okay, so in this in the third method, you need you need to check domain. You must you must do that. Okay. So method number four is definition. Okay, by definition. So log base two, uh, log base three of nine. So in the end, you get x equals to two. Okay, so to summarize, I, I, will, I will insert one more row, right? So this is by, by graph. By graph of function. And this one is logarithm taking take Take a logarithm on both sides. Okay, important elements be aware. Oops. Okay, be aware of the domain. Okay, and this last one is by definition. Okay, and the first one is what? By intuition. By intuition. Right, so these are the four major methods. All right, so let me see yours. What do we get when we look at these four methods? It changed, right? The two to the power of x, and this is eight, so it's two to the power of three, yeah? Right? So that's x equals to three. And the two to the power x, so the function is now changed. So we're gonna make some adjustment to the graph, right? So it's a two to the power x instead, right? Two to the power x, so we're gonna make some adjustment. Uh, this is V3, comma, 8, right? So I need to make some more adjustments. So this is 8. And uh, 2 to the power X. And it's the point 3, 8. There are all these changes. Right, three eight, right? So the it's 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 almost the same, right? And uh, hold on, sorry. Okay, so then this is a two to the power of x equals to eight. We take a logarithm. You can take a logarithm of any base. What what base did you take logarithm with? I think Bailey took base two, right? Uh, base two, right? Yeah, then you get x equals to what? Three. By definition, so this is log base two and this is eight and x equals to three. 
right? Do you see that we can start to learn to do summary, right? To summarize. So what I find that ever since that I realized I need to do summary in my study, it, it, it's not a good idea to start very big. It's overwhelming, but we can start from small. Okay, I think this will be an example to start from small. Okay, this will be an example to start with from small. Now, we have learned two, we have learned four, uh, four methods. Let's try something into something different. Let's try something different, okay? So I have my eyes set on number four. Number four. Let's see if you can apply all four methods. Okay, so number four. Two to the power X equals to three. Can you still apply all four methods? All four methods. So this time, Okay, so what is the answer, right? All four methods. Okay, I'm leaving the question mark there. I'm leaving the question mark there. I'm leaving all of these question mark there. Okay, I'm just gonna work a little bit on the graph. This is three. Right, so the crossing is no longer What is that crossing? Is the first method possible? I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you, yes. Yes. Okay, but you have to look at all the properties we learn about logarithm. Okay. Method number two is more visual. It's very visual. Number three, method number three, well, you have to be aware of domain and domain requirements are satisfied and method number four. What you get? Do you have a, do you have a solution using one of the methods? Okay, let's not talk about all four methods. Do you have a method? Have you, have, have you used a method and found a solution? If you do, you're, you're good. 
Okay, if you do, you're good. Okay. In our previous experience using base two, uh, using the, the previous method, we need to write it as two to the power of something, right? And here, how, how can we use two to the power of something to get a three? It's easy with eight, right? Because two to the power of three is eight, but now we have three. How can we use two to certain power and make it equals to three? That's the question, right? Does something, does, does, it, does something like that exist? <laughs> the answer is yes, it does. And this is what it is. Okay, and we have, we have learned it. It's log base two of three. So with which property do we use? Hmm? With what property did we use? That's the answer. The property we used was this one. This guy. Okay, do you see that? Okay, let me put one more row there so they can be together. So the significance of this particular, uh, even remember I asked you guys to derive this? You're gonna be using this property in calculus, calculus one, chapter three, chapter three. Okay, you're gonna be using these properties, of course, with uh, for natural log. The significance of this uh, expression, okay, remember omega is any positive number. Omega has to be positive. So any positive number can be expressed as an exponential form. That's the meaning of this expression. Okay, let me say it again. Any positive number can be expressed in exponential form of any base, base larger than zero, not equals to one. Okay, so let's look at the second method, the second method. The second method, you need to identify the input, right? So from the picture, it's a little difficult to identify the input. And of course, we know the answer. This is the answer. Okay, so that point, if you want to mark that point. Okay, so this point, if we are to mark it, is it gonna be, oh wait, uh, marking that point. Okay, so it's a log base two of three comma three is output. So input output, you see? Okay, has it become a little bit challenging? It's a little bit different now, right? Next taking logarithm on both sides, taking logarithm on both sides. What do you do? Taking logarithm on both sides. You can take log logarithm of any, any base on both sides, right? Yes? I can take a logarithm of any base on both sides. 
can I take a logarithm of um, ln on both sides? I check the domain, no problem. If I do that, what do I get? Okay, so I'm gonna put it this way, okay? If I take a logarithm on both sides, I get I will get x ln two equals to ln three. So in the end, if I divide both sides by ln two, I will get x equals to ln three over ln two. So x is equals to ln three over ln two. Can you take base two, log base two? Of course, but I'm just playing with it, okay? And wait a minute, I got two different looking answers. From this method, I get the answer x equals to log base two, three. And from this method, I got a different looking answers. Wait a second, what's going on? Now let's look at definition. If you use definition, if we use definition, let me clean this up. Okay. If I use definition, okay, I will get the same answer as I got in method two or method one. Now I got a different looking answer. Question is, are they the same? Are they the same? How can you demonstrate they're the same? Is this guy the same as this guy? Yeah, are they the same? Yes, they are, but you have to give a reason, don't we? So here's the reason. Change your base formula. Change your base formula. Okay. Change your base formula. If we we apply the change of base, base two of three, the new base we choose base E. Therefore, we have Ln. Ln. Omega was three, the old base was two. So they are exactly the same, right? They're exactly the same. Do you follow me? Do you, want, do you guys want to get your hands on it? Change your base formula. So all four methods could apply to numbers four. And next, I want you guys to try these on um, number two. Okay, so your turn. Okay, you, you must practice all four methods. Okay, and the rest is easy. Of course, there are still some other glitches we're gonna, we're gonna, we're, we are going to get to. But right now, I want you to practice all four methods to gain understanding. Okay, to gain better understanding. So now everybody do number two, please. Okay, three to the power X equals to five. Okay, apply all four methods.
So this time is no longer that intuitive, right? So, but I'm, I'm still going to put it there. Hold on. So I'm going to set up the I'm going to set up the table for you, and you're going to work out the four methods. If you you probably need some scratch paper yourself. Okay, three to the power x to equals to five. Question has changed. Okay, so all of these changed. All of these changed. And the graph has changed too. Okay, your turn. Reflect on those properties. I would like to see your work. I would like to see your work. If you like us, so please upload your work by pronto or by file upload to chat. We'll send it to the inbox if you wish.
to finish? Anybody? Nice. Look at that. I think I need to download it. I can turn the picture. Well, thank you for sharing that. If anybody else, okay, so please, uh, if anybody else would like to share your work and please don't hesitate, okay? I didn't want to limit to just one. Uh, it, it can be as many as you wish. All right, thank you for sharing, Bailey. So he, he got it. Right, the first method, this time it's not that intuitive, right? But it will become intuitive for you over time. Okay, so now we still, still consider that's done by intuition. Perfect. Okay, uh, great job. Number two, graphing. Okay. And uh, you put it at at nine here. I'm not a sh I'm not sure I would agree with you because the output is a five. I would imagine this line is at a five. So the point of intersection, okay, is so, so this is going to be the function of log base. Uh, I'm sorry, three to the power X. Okay, crosses with Y equals to five. The crossing, the crossing is what we're interested in, right? The crossing is uh, the, 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 the Y coordinate, the output is five, the input, however, the input is log base three of five. Do you follow me? Could I could everybody write it down? I think you I think you understood, you just forgot this is y is five. Okay, so this line is y equals to five. Okay, I want you to understand this the pictures, this picture, and know how to work with the picture. Okay, very, very important for you, especially when you take uh, calculus classes. Okay, this piece of uh, stuff I put in here is called analytical geometry. It's called analytical geometry. A lot of uh, uh, colleagues that I've been talking with and our, most of our students need more analytical geometry. We don't have a specific course for it, but you need it. You need it throughout Calc 1, 2, 3. Okay, so you need to have that sense. Okay, number two. Number three. Perfect. Number four, perfect. Number four, perfect. So, okay. Very good sharing. Thank you, Bailey. Okay. And anybody else who want to share? Okay, so I'm gonna put this away. We're still going back. Going back here, we're gonna put the answers I'm gonna put some more words on second method. Okay, on the second method. Okay, and of course here we get X equals to, um, you basically write it as three to the power of X 
equals to three raised to the power of log of base three of five. And let's put it at 150%. Okay. And as a result, this equals to, oh, wait, sorry. As a result, so X is equals to log base three of five. Okay, so on the second method, which we just erased, right, is the crossing, right? Because you, you see this as a function. We see this as a function. This function is that we have the input, the input is unknown, the output is um, five, right? We want the output to be five. The, the function is three to the power x. So when we put the, when we in graph, it's really the crossing input, what, what we do, crossing of the y equals to five and the curve which is three to the power X. Okay, so if, so if I put it in writing, would that be helpful? You want to be able to describe how that point is created. That point is the crossing of a horizontal line, okay? And the curve itself, we want to know the point of crossing. Okay, so I'm gonna put the label here. Okay, y equals to five crosses. Okay, so here I'm gonna put negative two, five, five point one. Okay, so let me put it that way so you would understand. Okay, so that line is y equals to five, the, the crossing of this horizontal line and the curve. Any questions so far here? This piece is to help you understand better analytical geometry, including the part I covered uh, for you on quadratic. Remember the vertical cut horizontal part? All those are in an effort to help you to understand those piece that, that piece that you, you so need, you so desperately need for your future classes, okay? That's, that's a piece, that's a piece of the puzzle about analytical geometry. So if you're looking for more reading, if you're looking for more reading about that, you should look for some, some books titled Analytical Geometry. Okay, of course, analytical geometry has more than that, but at least when we touch these functions, you know that analytical geometry part. Okay, analytical geometry will also include the three-dimensional, which you're gonna use in Calc 3, right? So now we're just working on two-dimensional, two-dimensional, two okay? And of course the crossing is, the crossing is that, okay? And you can take a logarithm of any, of any base, Okay, you can take the logarithm of any base. So what you get here? Did you carry out the operation? So what is your favorite base? What is your favorite base? What's your favorite base? Okay, so let me, let's carry it out the, if we take a logarithm on both sides, do you have a favorite base? Right? We haven't done common log, right? Let's do common log. So you, then you're gonna have an X common log three equals to common log five, right? And in the end, X equals to what? Common log five over common log three. Okay, I want you guys to do these with me because these, all these exercise we do is to prepare us for the rest of the exercises in this section, which we are going to continue doing tomorrow. Okay, very important. Okay, you don't have to do 
all four methods after this point. You can choose any method of, uh, you know, you find more convenient, but you must know all four methods. Okay, but last not least, and of course we use definition, we get the same answer. We get the same answer. Oh, wait, wait. Okay, you use definition, you get log base three, or five. How about that? And these answers are the same, aren't they? Because change of base formula, change of base formula. Okay, so today's homework, today's homework, I want you guys to try the rest of these uh, EXP1. You can see there's not, there's much to it, right? And we want to enhance our skills, enhance our understanding. And so please continue to practice on EXP1, EXP1, all of it now. Now you can do all of it, okay? But you don't have to do all four methods, but you will find that all these methods will be, you know, sometime one question, one method will be, uh, will work better. Okay, in some situation, more, one method will work better. In some other situation, another method works better, okay? But all method can be applied. So with that perspective, it really helps us to understand, once again, to understand these if statement, these if statement. We have three minutes left. How about we do one more? How about we do one more? And this one, I'm gonna pick for you, number five. Two raised to the power. You see, the question gets a little bit more complicated. Three x minus five equals two four. Oops. It's all right. Let me make it larger. One hundred seventy-five percent. If you are to pick one method, which one would you do? Which method would you be doing? Yeah. Which one will be easiest? Just one method. If you ask me to pick one method, I will pick this one. Right? You can use any other, other method, really. Okay. Um, I think that's all for today. I will see you guys tomorrow. I'm looking forward to. So please continue to explore all the other methods, uh, uh, as many methods as possible as they are applied to alpha uh, to exp1a okay see you tomorrow very good job thank you for your contribution uh in chat and as in pronto and see you tomorrow <laughs>